Welcome to the Blackout Podcast, where I get to talk to amazing people that do amazing things. And today I have Joyce Liu from Lumi Studios. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you, Israel, for inviting. So what was the idea behind starting Lumi Studios? Uh, so Lumi Studios, it's a medium production company. But uh, a lot of people ask, what's my background? It's not really in... Uh, video production or photography. Oh, I what is it? I study urban planning. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's so far apart. It's very far apart. Uh, but it's um, kind of how it's actually very related because um, I started uh, working with video because I found... Um, how is it? It's hard for people to understand what's happening in the planning world. And then sometimes a short video explains things in a human language, not in like jargons or planning terminologies will make things so much easier. Mm -hmm. uh, so two of my friends in university, they started a uh, nonprofit organization called Plan Effects, where we worked together to produce videos about urban planning. So that was my experience uh, with videos. So I worked with them for a couple of years before I started Lumi Studios. Okay, and then what was your process for starting Lumi Studios? Uh, it just, I found there's a need of uh, simplify uh, complex issues through more visual language, uh, not just in planning world, but in like uh, everything that we see uh, and then there's clients approaching us that's not related to urban planning. Uh, and then I feel, okay, that's probably the time for me to start a production company where I can focus on the quality of uh, the pro production, the filming itself. And then it just myself has a big passion towards documentary film. Mm -hmm. And then that's where I decided to uh, move a step forward. Oh, wow. And uh, what's the story behind the name Lumi? So Lumi means light. Oh, obviously. Yes. Illuminate. Yeah, so I studied like uh, architecture, planning, everything. And then I love photography. Uh, same with uh, producing uh, short films or videos. We're working with lights every, every day. Mm -hmm. So that's why I decided to call it Lumi. And like, did you study yourself or...? For, you mean for video production? Yeah, Lumi Studios, yeah. is it like all you? Uh, I started by myself, but I mean, definitely there's friends and colleagues like helping along the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I have partners joining me at Lumi Studios. Now we are a team of like seven people. Oh, wow. Yeah. What are some things you've worked on? So, uh, when we first started, we worked with lots of local events uh, that focuses on uh, culture, uh, different cultures, about the immigration, about uh, like things happens in the city. Mm -hmm. So we would go like document the uh, events. I feel like that way it's not we're not just working on a single project, but also telling a story about what's happening in Halifax mm -hmm. and. Uh, then I think starting uh, mid last uh, last year 2019, and then especially this year, we've shifted uh, our focus to working with more local businesses, especially over COVID period. Mm -hmm. um, businesses are having hard time uh, getting their word out. Um, like. I mean, when things happen, the first thing people thought of is cut down their marketing budget. <laughs> and then we uh, really found lots of businesses that believe in uh, what, like, what we're doing to believe in telling stories. And then we are happy to uh, capture the stories for them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then this year, I mean, no events, big events happening. Um, obviously, but have been a really good experience just getting to know more people behind uh, 
the city behind the businesses. Yeah. So like you mentioned COVID, we're shooting in a void really because <laughs> this is not the studio I usually use. But um, what things did you do to um, adapt to the changes that COVID brought? Mm -hmm. So first thing is uh, we took about a month and a half just uh, about two months to focus on the studio itself. We, um, that was the end of March till uh, the end of May-ish. Uh, there's nothing happened in the city and then the lockdown was like real. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so we look, we went through everything we did in the past three years about all the events we've been to, all the people we met, and then we just felt like fascinated by how much we've seen in the city. And then we thought, oh my God, we actually know so much about not just Halifax, like Nova Scotia in the whole that it's so much more than many, many other people because we were lucky to be involved in so many events and meet so many people. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we thought maybe it's a time to, for us to tell the stories, uh, to show it to many other people people in our province, how great this space is. And right now is a time to focus on the place we live in every day, uh, like rediscover what's around us. So that's a good place to kind of segue in this new project you're working on called Embrace. Yes. Yeah, do you want to tell me more about it? Yes. So Embrace is a new project I'm leading right now. So it's a video series telling uh, stories of pe people behind our local businesses. Um, I kind of just branched through how we started because we see there is a increasing demanding of like people wanting to know what's happening in our province. Mm -hmm. And uh, apparently um, we can't travel outside of uh, Atlantic bubble as much as before, uh, but it's a great chance for us to know what are some interesting food, activities or places to stay in Nova Scotia. Uh, and then by the time, I mean, by the time we are able to open to all the other tourists in Canada or worldwide, mm -hmm. uh, we can use this set of content to promote uh, Nova Scotia as mm -hmm. a whole. So basically it tells lots and lots and lots of stories, uh, not just a story about how, I mean, what the business is, but more of, so why did, the people choose to start business this way, what is innovative behind their method of starting their business. And even more, uh, are, uh, so p some people may address certain issues like uh, environmental issues, like equity, health, uh, like food accessibilities. Um, so it's just amazing when we get to know more of the people, you see uh, people's mindset in running their businesses. Oh, yeah. wow. Um, why did you choose that name, Embrace? Um, it's, I mean, kind of, uh, I, I feel, because before, when it's, when it's summer, people usually uh, just go out to explore other parts of either Canada or travel out to uh, other countries. And I also, found that it's a lack of um, connectness to our community here. And then after like COVID, people re started re-looking at, re-examining what's happening in the community. And then it feels like we're actually embracing more mm -hmm. of either ourselves uh, or the people surrounding us or this community we live in. So we, I felt like we never had such a big uh, time frame mm. that we can focus on either ourselves or families or friends around us. So it's also the perfect time to embrace our community, embrace the land we're living in, embrace the, uh, the people that's around us. Yeah. 
Yeah. And what's the plan? Is it like uh, going, how are you releasing it? How are people going to watch Embrace? Yes. So Embrace is going online December the 1st. Oh, wow. So with its first episode will be online December the 1st. And you will uh, find it on Instagram and YouTube. Um, we are looking to release every, I think every two weeks, for the first little while. Mm -hmm. um, afterwards, the goal is to release one episode per week. Oh, wow, that's a quick turnaround. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what are some of the companies you've talked to so far for Embrace? Yeah, uh, I can talk a little bit about the first episode. Yeah, sure. Uh, the first episode is with a local uh, restaurant called Kio. Uh, it's located right on Barrington Street. So it's a, uh, it's a bar, but it's also a uh, Japanese restaurant. So the owner uh, was very innovative on how uh, she introduces a foreign, uh, like a food culture, uh, but combine it with something that local people are familiar with. Mm -hmm. So for some people that are not so adventurous on with their food, they can sit in a familiar environment with a cocktail bar and mm -hmm. then try little appetizer style food uh, from Japan so they don't feel like oh it's like too to, much yeah. for them yeah uh, so by um, kind of knowing her uh, interview her in Kyo and having her talk about why she started the business this way and chatted with the bartender there with the manager also the chef mm -hmm. uh, seeing how the food were made uh, and then you will see like uh, the owner, she she has an immigration background too. Mm. So you will really see like how um, people are trying to thrive in the very competitive food industry. And I think this lead, uh, this kind of creative creativity and innovation really leads up to their success mm. right now. So, you know, I'm lucky to be the festival director of the Mosaic Film Festival and one of the films that was selected for this year's festival is your film, Why Halifax? Uh, do you want to tell me a little bit more about that film, why you made it, and the process of making it? Yeah, I would love to. So I felt super, super excited and honored to have my first, very first short documentary film featured in this year's Mosaic Film Festival. And uh, the film is called Why Halifax? So it explores the Chinese immig uh, immigration history in Halifax uh, from like present, dated back to about 100 years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, so in the film, I interviewed uh, five immigrants that came here over like 80 years ago oh. and then until like very recently. Mm -hmm. um, so from... I mean, the title, it looks like it explores the Chinese immigrant, immigration history. Mm. But when I introduce to people about the film, it is really is a film about the change in our city. So it actually didn't have that much to do with, uh, I mean, just Chinese immigration, mm -hmm. because it's how far it expands like this 80 to 100 years all these stories that people told it reveals like how the city have changed mm -hmm. and then how the people that's living in our community helped shaping our city even uh not just like the the uh, people environment but also the physical landscape, physical environment. Mm -hmm. So one very interesting pattern after I interviewed all of them, we actually found it out. Uh, people might know the corner of the um, uh, Barrington Street versus the, uh, I couldn't remember the street name, but where the uh, Maritime Center is, that corner. Mm -hmm. So there is a in-spring hot pot and there's a parkade. There's another Chinese little grocery store there. So a hundred years ago, that used to be a spot where Chinese immigrants were centered. Oh. And then it just in the middle of these years, it's been uh, changed. It's been many businesses 
coming in and out, and then the recent couple of years coming back with a couple of Chinese mm. businesses. So we found always、oh, comes with a full circle too yeah, in a hundred yeah, years. Yeah. yeah. So because of my background in urban planning, I always look like to look at city in a way like because the city is meant to build for people to live in, and then we. Are all like together working to build a better community for us, and then the best for how we should respect the land, would respect the nature.、Mm -hmm. So, how does the people living in shape our community、uh, become more resilient?、Uh, it's what I really want to explore through this short documentary film. Yeah, why Halifax is great, and we can't wait to show. I mean, it's an online festival. But COVID has changed so many things. I'm gonna end it with this question: Oh, you're Chinese yourself, and you've lived here how long now?、Uh, I've been here eight years. Yeah, eight years. So, what are some of the changes you've seen over the eight years for you, and why did you decide to move to Halifax? Why Halifax? Yes. So I moved to Halifax because、uh, apparently I knew Dalhousie got a. Really amazing urban planning program before I came, and then also because of the ocean,、oh. <laughs> I always dreamed of living in an ocean like city since growing up.、Um, and after I've been through the program, I found、uh, pretty like a big potential of what Halifax could be,、mm -hmm. and、um, I was involved in many. A local like nonprofit organizations doing some like charity works,、mm -hmm. also、uh, involves in like a little bit of、uh, city plannings、uh, or event、uh, culture events.、Mm -hmm. I really felt I felt the、uh, warmth of the people here. So it's literally what kept him here. It are the people that I met.、Uh, yeah. Yeah. And Joyce, thank you so much for sharing your beautiful film Why Halifax, and I can't wait for when Embrace comes live December one, and、um, I really can't wait to have you back on the Blackout Podcast. Okay, thank you so much, Israel.